Japanese flags were flying in Tiananmen Square. And they were flying there for Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe for his first official visit to Beijing in years, a landmark visit. Both China and Japan have agreed to improve economic and diplomatic relations. In a joint statement, they emphasize the need for free trade across Asia. China and Japan, they want to strengthen ties in light of the Trump administration's unconventional foreign policy on trade and military issues. Tomohiko Tanaguchi is the special cabinet advisor to the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. He joins us live now from Tokyo. And sir, thank you for joining us again here on the program. We know that ties are warming between Japan and China. Um, the Japanese national flag flying in Tiananmen Square and in front of the Great Hall of the People in Beijing. It, to observers, that was a surreal sight. But to Japanese officials, what does it signify to you? Uh, the Chinese are the Japanese neighbors, and Japan and China must continue to live together as neighbors eternally. And uh, so long as that's the case, it's far better for both nations to have manageable good relations than otherwise. And so that's uh, the, 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 the step taken by the leaders from both sides today has been long overdue, and I think it's a, a very good indicator uh, also for our other neighbors, notably those countries in the ASEAN region who mm -hmm. wish to have both, I mean, the engagement of the Chinese and the engagement of the Japanese. <clears throat> yeah, this visit will have ripple effects across the region, and it comes at a critical time in U.S.-China relations, where there is tension over trade and over the South China Sea. Is Donald Trump pushing China and Japan closer together? Uh, had it not been, Christy, for the good relationship between the United States and Japan, and especially between Donald Trump and Shinzo Abe, I don't think this has uh, happened. Uh, so uh, the bottom line for the Japanese diplomacy is uh, the United States counts more than anything else. And uh, let me just uh, say also the identity uh, for Japan is one of maritime, not land-based. And that maritime identity has also been strengthened over the, over the last couple of years by the enhancement of the U.S.-Japan relationship and the Japan's uh, wider reach across the region to countries such as Australia and India. Okay, well, look, what we are seeing today in China, we are seeing a warming in relations between Japan and China. And despite that, we know that there are deep divisions and deep historical grievances between these two countries. You know, the anti-Japan sentiment in China, territorial disputes at sea. Will these two nations reconcile given this fraught past? Both leaders, Premier Li and Prime Minister Abe, and over dinner, President Xi and Prime Minister Abe acknowledged that there do exist many challenges now and ahead. Nonetheless, as neighbors, they agreed that they must meet with each other rather more frequently. And I think that uh, promise made today uh, is going to work as a solid foundation for these two nations to manage difficulties down the road. I wouldn't say there would be no problem. Uh, there would be problems as neighbors, but uh, it's important for these leaders to meet on a frequent basis. And she, President Xi is going to come to Japan on, uh, uh, over G20 summit meeting yeah. that uh, Japan is going to host next year. Yeah, so you anticipate more high-level meetings to come between Japan and China. Tomohiko Tanaguchi, uh, senior advisor to the Japanese Prime Minister, sir. Thank you for joining us. Take care. You're watching.